Tucker Carlson and Ice Cube. Let's see how much we get through of this. Um, mm-hmm. You let me know when you want to stop it at any time. First, if if, if, um, if I can add, if ahead. I can add, add, add into this, uh, first of all, this is an outstanding conversation. Now, uh, look, to be clear here, I mean, obviously, let's get the first thing right off the bat. Obviously, Tucker Carlson is doing well for himself. Ice Cube doing well for themselves they're, they're they're doing both financially well but i want to bring up the fact that again they're having a conversation now normally if this was a few years ago this would be unheard of you would not be seeing something like this and i'm noticing mm-hmm. a barrier is starting to break apart it's not breaking apart fully because we're all still in our bubbles we're all still in our sides and you know you can't speak to somebody on the right or you can't speak to this group or that group but we this is what i like to call maybe the stepping stone of maybe a broader idea of looking at, okay, let me talk to my neighbor. Let me talk to somebody who might think differently than me, but we realize that there's something wrong. And I think that's what needs to be done. And I I really have to commend both Tucker and Ice Cube for doing this, but maybe this could lead to something far grander that doesn't involve people within that social elite, but maybe us in general as a whole as a society. Because at the end of the day, who are the people who are being stepped on by neoliberalism and the censorship and the establishment telling us how to live and how to work and how we should conduct ourselves? It's us. It's the regular people. And I, I, I take this conversation with a little bit more hope. Maybe I'm being too idealistic here, but I, I like to look at maybe the bigger picture that maybe this could be something far grander than what is being presented here. Maybe uh, maybe it's a beginning to something more. That's that, that's <clears throat> that's just so um and for those that know you covered this already um so i'm being that i haven't covered it and you've covered this um what what sort of pushback since you because i know you probably looked into it but what sort of pushback or sort of i don't know right word negativity have you heard about this interview? If you've heard any, if you haven't heard any, then of course I'll uh, say you haven't heard any. But it's what have it, you heard? of course, of course, it's the typical. Uh, oh, Ice Cube is uh, secretly a Trump supporter, a right winger. Oh, Tucker Carlson's tricking Ice Cube into thinking he cares about the social issues. All oh, these are just two rich guys talking, you know. But I, but again, somehow it always revolves around Trump. That somehow Trump's involved in this, and and. Oh, they, they need to follow the mandates and you should have listened to the government take the jab and all this other stuff, which, again, it's 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 the stuff that we've heard before, but it's so pathetic. It's like someone insulting your shoes. You, you, you heard the joke 10, 12 times. Do you have anything else new? Because <laughs> you've been saying the same joke over and over again because I'm about to roast you with 10, 12 different things. And all you got is the same hit to keep coming at me over and over again. And it's getting played out. Yeah, it might have got one or two last, but everyone's waiting. You got anything else new? And it's and it's not even coming from Trump support. It's not even coming from libertarians or greens or socials. It's coming from vote blue liberals. These are like those are the and and it's and it's the same stuff we heard. And of course, they're using all the isms like Tucker and Ice Cube are being sexist or misogynist or being phobes of of, of, of any of that type. And it's just like these two are having a conversation. You're 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 you're, you're making something far grander than than it should be and and you're, you're you're not even listening to the words that's that's the criticisms that i've seen and it's and they're mediocre and lackluster at best and i'm being kind with those words because again i could i could swear but i don't want to get you guys in trouble so yeah i hear you i hear you. um so let's uh let's play a little bit of it and see how much we get through where is it uh okay right here here we go. So why would you be doing this of all interviews? I mean, you could do an interview with anyone. You're doing an interview with me. Obviously, you're, you're going to take abuse for doing that. Like, why would you do that? Um, because I think it's silly not to talk to people. Um, I think whether we agree or not, right? that has nothing to do with it. You know, it's like this is what it's all about. Let's Let's talk about it. Let's... Let's debate. And, and you know, I've been shut Wait, out. That sounds like right-wing extremism. And <laughs> what about ism? What, what, but I've been shut out. You know, some, some platforms will not have me on. Why? Um, they don't like that I'm, you know, an independent thinker. I'm not part of the herd. I'm not part of uh, the go-along-to-get-along gang. 
so to speak. So, um, you know, I'm an outsider. And so, you know, I'm not part of the club. So I have to, I have to go places for, for one that I'm welcome yeah. and where I can voice my opinion without somebody, um, you know, saying I'm a bad person and that they never want to have me on their platform again. What, what platforms have, have banned you? I've been, I've been, um, you know, I tried to go on, I tried to go on The View. They didn't have me on The View. Why? Um, well, a few of the guests just really didn't like where I was coming from. So, uh, or a few of the hosts, I mean. So that's what I was told by the producers. You know, I don't know if the producers was just copping out and using. We can stop here because that is... I believe, I mean, it's obvious why he's being shut out because he's been on The View before. And you have to think back, okay, well, in between him going and being more a part of the corporate media sphere and going on shows from doing all of his movies, and now what, you know, has changed? The pandemic has changed. Pandemic has happened, and, you know, you know he's been... Uh, let's just say adversarial to that. And we won't even go into that. But, uh, uh, but then and also, what did he say in 2020 about the democratic party? What did he say? He said, we need to get something for our vote. Mm -hmm. And then he was immediately attacked. Do you recall that time when he was attacked? I, I vaguely I, recall I, him being attacked. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I do remember him being attacked because he, he was just asking for compromise and not, not only just compromise, but justice for black voters. Because at the end of the day, I mean, the question was being brought up. What does the black community, what do black voters get out for voting for Democrat? Uh, and he was citing all the examples of the times in the Democratic Party, even under Bill Clinton, even under Obama, how uh, African-Americans were constantly being screwed over by the neoliberal policies of the Democratic establishment, especially under Obama, where uh, I forget the percentage, but a large amount of uh, black wealth was evaporated under Obama's mm. presidency. Correct yes. me if I'm wrong on this, but yes, it's, it's like a, a, every time, uh, you know, and Ice Cube's bringing up a legit question, but I, I would expand it further and say like, what does anyone get out of voting for Democrat? Except the fact that the Democrats being abusers tell you things you want to hear, but then as soon as you give them what they want, they go right back to slapping you and stealing from your wallet. Um, and the thing is, if, no one wanted to see Trump get reelected. I, I remember talking about this in 2020, but these are legit things to really address because, OK, yes, I get that Trump triggers people, but what are we going to get from Biden in return? And what are black voters going to get from Biden in return? And the answer is black voters got nothing from Biden. What? Maybe the, the feel good uh, notion that you have the first <laughs> black woman as vice president. I mean, OK, yeah, her polling number is absolutely abysmal. Biden's more popular <laughs> than her. And that's not saying much. And let's let me let's examine for a moment these the concept of these milestones. OK, mm -hmm. we're talking 200 or coming up on 200 years out of slavery uh, or since the emancipation of proclam uh, since the emancipation proclamation. And um, we're still. Actually, let me let me let him make the point because I don't want to because I've seen this and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. So let me let him make the point and I, I, then so, I'll make. The point. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Two things here. So obviously, here in the Western Hemisphere, there is 400 years of slavery, and according to this, and maybe I'm, I need to get the numbers uh, fixed on it. Uh, slavery officially ended 155 years ago. There we go. How, mm -hmm. However, however, an argument can be made because of the prison industrial complex that uh, slavery is still alive and well. <clears throat> an argument can be made. Exactly. 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 So you summed it up. There we go. Some of the hosts to to not have me come on and explain myself, but you'd be a good booking for them. I've been on there before. Yeah. You know, it's just when I've became an independent thinker when I've, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't follow their, uh, 
their brand of politics, I guess. But if you can't think for yourself, then you're not really free, are you? No, you're not. You're not. But I've been excluded. I've been excluded on Oprah, you know. I, I, on Oprah? On Oprah, <laughs> yeah, I've been excluded. Yeah, man. Um, I would think you'd be the person Oprah would want to promote. I mean, you grew up in South Central. You were successful at a young age. You have dignity. You say what you think. Like, I thought that was the goal. Me too. You know, I don't know what it is, but, you know, several of my, you know, I had a movie called Barbershop, you know. Yeah, um, I remember. That, that I wasn't invited to participate with the cast. I uh, produced a show called uh, Black White, uh, and it was it was a very controversial show. And um, once again, they had the whole cast on, but I wasn't invited. And so I don't know. On I don't Oprah, know what that's, on Oprah yeah, show. Yeah, so I don't know what that's. Really but about. Oprah's obviously a saintly, godlike figure who's revered by all decent people. <laughs> Why would she exclude you? No, uh, listen. Uh, Oprah's, Oprah's terrible. Oprah's I've said reign, this many times on this show. She is awful. Go ahead. O kid. Oprah's reign over Chicago. Uh, I remember that too. Like that was the powerhouse in this city. I mean, if you were a small business or restaurant and Oprah went to visit you, I mean, it's an uh, mm, Caesar's thumbs up or down, yeah. you know, Caesar's up or down. And if uh, you did anything to, uh, let's say, tick off the Oprah, well, then the Oprah was going to bring the whole hammer on you because it was uh, it, 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 it was an interesting time. And plus, again, uh, his film Barbershop, a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal film. Uh, it also mm. took place here in the city. I think it was set in Chicago. But, uh, it, it, you know, the fact that he wasn't invited, this is the director. So the guy who made <laughs> sure that the other actors can work, he's not there. And I remember talking about on my show because we actually covered this segment. And I said, okay, I could kind of get it because maybe he would overshadow the cast. But how can you have the cast and people there without the director and the, the engine behind everybody making this film come into existence? Yeah. yeah you kind of sort of need him there. I could, I, I, I could see why, but it was stupid, and you have to book him there. So, I, if, I, again, uh, but there, there's, there's also uh, a lot of things where Oprah is very petty and selective who she wants on her show. So there's that to include as well. I just, um, these, these, you know, bi black billionaires, these black, multi hundred millionaires have all this money and they're just you know they got these charities pretty much like giving back to the people that a way that a capitalist would give back to a, to the people you know like a scrooge like which is what how i kind of see these uh organizations they have that's not really doing anything so it just it's ridiculous to have this amount of money ask yourself this question this is how i this is how i frame it if Harriet Truman just magically was alive now, what would she be saying if she saw black people with hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions, and the condition of so many millions of black people, and they're just got their hands full doing nothing? <laughs> what the Ooh. hell kind of shit is this? When she's sacrificing her life for the underground world world. And then she used to just to come alive and be like, what kind of shit is this? That's you know, how I imagine, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. You know, just, 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 just to imagining, uh, her response, you know, all of a sudden, why, why did I get a flashback of the film Django and chain where, you know, I mean, I mean, that film done by Quentin Tarantino, you know, especially when they get to Candyland and they see the, that, that entire landscape there. It's like, Holy crap. And then, of course, I think what well, who's it? Samuel Jackson was playing. Uh, I forget. I forget the name of his character. But he, but he was okay with the way he was being treated. But everyone else was being treated like dirt. Like, I don't know. It's like it's like a whole bunch of neoliberalism right there. So it leads to that maybe a small microcosm of just neoliberalism here in the United States, where you do have billionaires of different classes, and uh, they're just not doing anything to elevate anyone. Cause I guess they, they made it, but they pulled up the ladder right behind them. So no one else yeah, can follow. Much. <laughs> like Bernie and AOC is pretty much doing, but let's get back to a little more of the video. We're not going to let it take up too much more time. And we're about a quarter of the way through. 
I really don't know. You know, that's that's something that I would love to find out. But I, I don't I can't tell you, you know, if there's a single thing that I've done or said to her. Have you noticed that it is more controversial to criticize Oprah than to burn the American flag? Really? <laughs> it seems that way. <laughs> I've never heard anybody criticize Oprah. Do you think it's political or do you think it's deeper than that? I don't I mean you're not like a right winger. No. No. You don't even seem that political. She has power. No, I'm not Mm -hmm. really. I'm pretty much, you know, um, just want to do right by the people, you know. So if that comes through political means, that comes through the private sector, wherever it comes, you know, uh, I'm down to work with whoever's down to do something right for the people. So I remember reading you say something along the lines of, I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not a Trump voter. You actually attacked Trump at one point, but you were willing to meet with Trump do you think that crossed the line? I think some people didn't like that. Um, but I think it's idiotic. You know, I can attest to that. I remember that. It was during that was during the now it's starting to come back to me. Mm-hmm. This was during the big uproar about him. You oh, so you're gonna meet with Trump and not with Biden. That's how that that's what, how it was being portrayed, of course, by the liberals mm-hmm. online just going crazy in the K hives. I, I remember that now. Well, the, well, the K hive, well, the K hive, and the G hive, and all these liberals, you know, all, all these vote blue no matter who's sycophants, they're like, well, how dare you speak to Trump? Well, you, guess what? Trump was the then president of the United States, so yeah. of course Ice Cube is going to speak with Donald Trump. What's he supposed to do? Pretend he doesn't exist? I get what Trump does to people, but honest to God, he's living rent free in a lot of people's head. People are still triggered by 2016. It is now 2023. It is time for people to move on. It's just like people who have Jimmy Dore derangement syndrome. Yeah. Is it Jimmy's yeah. fault that the Democrats suck and that he called him out on it years ago? Is it his fault that the Democrats actually did all the things that he said with that they were going to do? Because it's not his fault. It's not CJ's fault. It's not my fault. It's not anyone else in independent media who's been calling out the Democrats. So if he wants to speak to Donald Trump, fine. That is his social right. But what you see from these liberals, these vote blue no matter who, predominantly white liberals are saying, you as a black man need to listen to us. We know what's best for you because that's what a lot of these white liberals are thinking. We know better, so you must follow us. But no, that's not how it works. So, of course, speaking to Trump, all right, he spoke to Trump. Did the world end? Is the world on fire? No, it's not. The world is still going on. That's what's happening. Yeah. So people yeah. want to be stupid. Great point. Um... Let's listen to yeah. Let's listen to some little more. It's still interesting. So as long as it's interesting, we'll we'll continue. It's 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 a, it's a fascinating interview. Enemies meet. <laughs> Say again. Precisely. Enemies meet. <laughs> enemies meet. First of all, what he said there was was enemies meet because look, I. I don't want to say that they're they're controversial, but I mean the, the the people who maybe don't politically align with me. I've had libertarians on my show. I've had a lot of people on my show that I agree with and disagree with. That's I mean, that's show running 101. But also, number two, I've been told by individuals who think they know better that, oh, you shouldn't interview this person or you shouldn't go on this person's show or you shouldn't speak to these people. Well, when I've also interviewed those people who told me who not to interview, I've been told, hey, you shouldn't talk to those people. I'm going to talk to whoever I want to talk to. And I'll be damned if I have anyone of any social group say, oh, you should talk. I'm going to talk to who I want to talk because that's my right, as it's Ice Cube's right, as it's RBN's right. You've had a treasure trove of guests on your yeah. show. So it is your prerogative to talk to whoever you want to. And if it offends people, people who are easily triggered, you don't have to watch the show. You want to hate watch? Go ahead, hate watch. But um, <laughs> no one's listening. I'm, don't talk to this person. That's that's, high, that's 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 not even high school mentality. That's kindergarten mentality. I don't want to talk to you. Well, then fine. Get out of here. It's terrible. But let's uh let's listen a little more to the conversation. Do you think that crossed the line? I think some people didn't like that. Um, but I think it's idiotic. You know, enemies meet. <laughs> right. You know, they they talk. I'm pretty sure there's some communication between Russia and the Ukraine right now. Somebody's on the phone talking to somebody, trying to um to come up with a a solution. Um, so we just got to talk. That's the only way we're going to work this out. You know, I know when the talking stops, 
the fighting starts. You know, a lot of people, they, you know, think I'm a, you know, Republican, I'm, I'm a right winger, um, just because I was willing to speak to the Trump organization, administration, I mean, and I was willing to speak with the Biden administration as well, you know. Um, Have you? One guy in the administration, but it didn't go anywhere. You know, it was basically a, you know, take my temperature kind of call. We'll get to it. Like, but you know, they they never got to it or never planned to. As a matter of fact, the guy left the administration. So, you know, after after talking to him for a year or so, he was gone, and then, you know, we were left really with no one there. To continue the conversations. What do you think of Biden? I don't think he's given the people who put him in exactly what they thought they were going to get from him. Um, but his most loyal voters, according to the polls anyway, are black voters, particularly black women. Mm -hmm. And those numbers don't seem to change. So no matter what happens or doesn't happen. So do you expect they ever will change? You know, whether they become independents and not vote for anybody who's not bringing it, you know, it's like people want your vote. Um, they have to do something to earn it. If they don't earn it, why are you going down there and pulling that lever? Because the other side hates you. That's the that's the pitch they make. We, we may suck, but the other side hates you. Um, you suppose the dance with the person you brought. Yeah. You know? And the person that 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 brought you to the dance, you guys are supposed to dance together. And if that doesn't happen, you got to go find another dancing partner before the night is up and the music stops. What do you think of Kamala Harris? I mean, obviously she's a great politician to be able to become the vice president of the country. Um, I don't know how effective she is at her job. What's your view of the police at this point? Um, it's the same, you know, they, <laughs> it really is, you know. It's, 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 I wonder are they laughing because he's talking about the same as his, his, his songs, like F the police and stuff like that. I think that's the reference why they, they kind of have that little chuckle there. So you, you know it's interesting though. Again, he brings up the point that was Biden and Harris or the Biden Harris administration. One person in the White House, but it's not Biden. And then that person's no longer there within the ear. So <laughs> while Ice Cube speaks to Trump, he doesn't speak to Biden. And then again, what has Biden delivered? Especially to progressives who were bullied by Vote Blue, no matter who. I I, I met a few progressives who were uh, bullied and had to, yeah. you know, v voted for Biden. But now it's like, you guys got nothing. You have no leg to stand on. You have nothing to show for all the work and sacrifice being made. What'd you get from Biden? Nothing. Of course, we're going to probably not get anything from Trump. But, you know, this this whole lie that Democrats are better, it's, it's evidence right there. They're going to ignore Ice Cube like that? Just give him one person? Okay, fair enough. But at least Trump bothered to meet with him. That's saying a lot. And, and how important was the person that they gave him if he's gone <laughs> within a month, a year? Yeah. That means that guy had no importance at all to the to the administration. That mm -hmm. is just a joke. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh move to this uh a particular clip that he's talking about. Actually, is that the clip I was looking for? Uh it might be this one here. This is another one. No, this is the same. No, this is another one. We wound up in Los Angeles recently with the rapper Ice Cube driving through his old neighborhood. Didn't expect that to happen. Here's how it went. Dr. Dre came by this house. I'm going to show you. We're going to ride by. He used to live down the street from me. His cousin, his cousin moved on our block when I was 12. He was 11. And his name is Sir Jinx. He became one of my producers when I went solo. Sir Jinx. He moved on the block, and then Dr. Dre was his cousin. So Dre came by a couple of times. It was cool, you know, to be able to see somebody who was actually making making records. Yeah. We were still amateurs. Okay, not at this street, 
but the next one, make a left. Get out there, and we're not getting out because I don't want my pops to be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> These people come by my house. You didn't tell me. Oh, your dad still lives there. Yeah, yeah, my pops still lives there. How long has your family been there? Man, it's since 1962. These boys, they all grew up on this block. Okay, that's my son. That's my son. Famously, it's one of the tougher neighborhoods in the city. So where are we? we right now, we're on Manchester. This right here, that's uh. I'm gonna that is, that pause the volume. Old, yeah, old, yeah, I'm gonna pause old, the volume here because I don't want music, this song yeah. to. Yeah, I don't want this song to get get us caught up. So let's pause the music part of that and get back to the sound. Uh, now. He's 13 of them dead, and that's before they even reach 21. You know, I'm, I just turned 21, so you know, I, I thank God that I've even reached 21. Just the block I grew up. In. Right here. Yeah, Does this look the same? It it pretty much looked the same. Uh, you know, but it used to be like more trees. Like every every house had a tree in front of it, and uh, at some point the city started cutting cutting. And now I'm gonna fast forward to more of the conversation that they have. Right. Not that one. Take a different position. Um, so that's kind of how I get. On um, what topics? Um, you know, it's been on, you know, the vaccine. The Hollywood Reporter says actor Ice Cube is saying no to a nine million dollar payday because he won't say yes to the COVID vaccine. The actor and rapper was set to co-star in a new comedy, Oh Hell No, alongside Jack Black. But when producers requested all cast members get a COVID vaccine, Ice Cube backed out. Why wouldn't you take the vax? Um, you, you had a direct order to take it. You were told to take it. Yeah, I, I'm not real good with direct orders, but on a whole nother note, <laughs> um, but it was a command. I didn't. I mean, they told. I'm sorry, they told you. I mean, they couldn't have been clearer about yeah, it. Yeah, it was pretty clear. Uh, <laughs> uh, did you take it? Of course not. Yeah, no. It, it wasn't ready. You know, it. It was. It was. I'm gonna just pause this here. It's just a second, and then uh, bring it back on. Feel safe. But they told you you were safe. I know what they said. <laughs> I know what they said. And I heard them. I heard them loud and clear. But it's it's not their decision. There's no repercussions if they're wrong. But I get all the repercussions if they're wrong. Was, was it a tough call for you? No, it wasn't a tough call. You know, I wanted it to be an example for my kids. You know, really make sure they didn't take it either. Show them that I. And I'll pause it here and stop it here. And the reason I wanted to play like more than just the um, like the just the conversation about politics and why that and why this is that the these conversations is the reason this is the why they don't want you to have these conversations. Because you, he's learning about his how he grew up, how you grew up. Oh, that this and that. It gives you, it makes the person more than this two dimensional person that's just only you know is is on one side of of one subject against you. And this it humanizes you basically. It makes you a human. So now the disagreements are just a disagreement, and they're not like uh, now it divides us. And this is what they don't want us to do. Now that now just because they have this conversation, you think this makes Tucker Carlson say, "I'm pro defund the police." No, nobody thinks that. No, no, no one thinks this having this conversation. But having a conversation, if there is things that they agree on, it would allow the door has already opened now for them to even talk about those things. Whereas before a conversation like this, it wouldn't. Uh, it would not. Uh, happen. So any final words on the interview before we move on here? Uh, you know, it is interesting how we, we do see how Ice Cube is 
showing his neighborhood, how he grew up to Tucker. And I, I'm going to butcher the quote because I, I don't want to ruin it, but I, I just can't help of, of his character in the film where he played as a uh, doughboy in uh, Boys in the Hood. It came out in 1991. And it was nearing the end of the film, and it's about how he was reflecting on how people either know and care or don't know. I, I, again, I don't know the full quote. I, I, do, do, mm. do, do, do you know the full quote I'm I talking don't, about? I don't re- it, don't, it doesn't ring a bell right now. Ah, oh, damn it. Damn it. I'm, tr- I'm trying to see if I could find it, but I think it might be too late. If anyone knows the quote, um, yeah, here it is. Wait, wait, here it is. Wait, wait. Either they don't know, don't show, or don't care about what's going on in the hood. That's oh, I didn't know that's the one you're looking for. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 the one. And uh, the thing is, a lot of people don't know how bad it is in a lot of the inner cities, or how things are been designed that way. I mean, in my neighbor, in my city, Chicago, uh, we're, we're hyper segregated. I mean, it is it is mm. downright horrifying because you have a lot, still have a lot of industry and polluters in the south west side and the west side neighborhoods all over uh, Chicago, but in the north side, you don't see it there. You, you don't see that industry there. You don't see the schools being shut down. You don't see the roads not being paved. It's, it's, it is a, it is an eye opening thing, especially if, if, if RBN ever comes to Chicago, we'll do a little field trip. We'll start off on the North side, everything all shiny and nice and go mm. all the way down to the that South side. Good. And you will see some changes. And dare I say, you might see some gentrification happening too. It's it's been a while since I've done something like that, but it's I'm sure you, you'll see. Nice, nice paved sure. roads, grab and go taco, nice little music stands to boarded up schools, uh, you know, uh, torn apart roads, abandoned houses. It's and and it's and it's by design because the politicians keep it that way. 